is fine You got drunk on the day Like it was wine Six o'clock news. This is Ian Ramage. We've just heard that controversial rock star Mark Bolan has been killed in a car crash. His mini, being driven by girlfriend Gloria Jones, has careered off the road into a tree in South London. Gloria's detained in hospital with serious injuries. Here's David Camburn. The couple had been returning home from a night at Morden's Club in the capital. Bolan, who was 29, is said to have died instantly. A trendsetter for a generation, Bolan had a new album in the can and had pre-recorded two programmes for a new television series. He once said he was likely to die young and probably in a car crash. Hot Love, one of the biggest hits for T-Rex. The group had a string of successes in the late 60s and early 70s and their lead singer Mark Bolan became a star. His trademark was his heavy makeup and tinseled appearance and his boogie-style guitar playing. Thus, he might have remained unknown, but for the health and encouragement of disc jockey John Peel. In 1967, when I came back from California and I went to work for one of the pilot stations, uh, he started sending me uh, tapes and acid tapes of songs that he'd recorded. I mean, they were never released commercially. And uh, because there was a certain amount of flexibility on the pilots, obviously I used to play these on the air. And uh, when I came on leave, uh, I came ashore on leave one week, I went to met him somewhere and uh, thought he was a nice lad and we got on all right, you know. And um, when the pirates were closed down and I started doing a few gigs in the, uh, around the country, I always used to insist that um, if I was booked, the Tyrannosaurus Rex would be booked as well. And we used to do awful things, really, now. I mean, like driving up to um, Newcastle from London in a hired mini, the three of us, to work for 15 quid. Uh, with all of the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex's equipment in the boot of the Mini, so as you can imagine, they didn't really have an awful lot of equipment in those days. But they were good gigs, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a nice nice period of time. We really became very good friends after that, and I suppose for like three or four years, uh, he and his wife were, you know, my wife and I's best friend, or best friends, and we spent a lot of time together. But after his initial string of hits, Bowen's popularity waned. His marriage broke up, and he turned to drink and drugs. He fought his way back from addiction and with a TV series currently on the screen and new records in the pipeline, things were looking up for him. One of his closest friends was Steve Harley of Cockney Rebel. He's currently in Los Angeles and was clearly shocked when I spoke to him on the phone earlier today. He was perhaps my closest friend, with one or two exceptions in the whole world. And uh, rock and roll people don't always have a lot of really close friends, you know, because of the strange lifestyle and the unreality that the surrealism that you live, live amongst, you know. It's a very unreal world that we live in a lot of the time. And when you've got a really close friend, they kind of mean perhaps more to you than friends do to a lot of other people, I think. Were you surprised that he died so young? Oh, uh, no, not at all. It, it, it's the only way for him. He knew. He's known for years. He was, he was really a star in its truest sense, not the way it's tossed around these days, words like superstar. Mark was a star, and he lived like one, and we were together a lot of the time, writing and singing and things. And we lived always on the brink. It's the only way to live, you know, for some of us. And uh, While you're doing it, you also know that but one day you're going to pay the price, you know. And he knew that. He always knew that. And this is like the rock and roll death that I know he would have. He couldn't have planned it better. And if that's really the way Mark Bowen wanted to die, it's perhaps ironic that one of his greatest heroes was Eddie Cochran, and he too was killed in a car crash. I mean, now Chris Welsh of Melody Maker magazine. Chris, what sort of person was Mark Bolan beneath all that stage makeup and stage gear? Well, he was a wonderful guy. I really love Mark. I thought he was uh, one of the funniest people in, uh, in the art business. He had a tremendous sense of humour. One of the most likeable people that I've ever met in uh, ten years of working for Melody Maker. <laughs> 
Did you know him very well? Well, I knew Mark from uh, 66. That's the first time I met him when he, he had a single called The Wizard, which uh, <coughs> came up during the, just before the psychedelic, the psychedelic era, just around that time. When did you last see him? I saw Mark last uh, week, last Wednesday, at uh, Granada mm. Television, when he was uh, recording for his next uh, show, The Mark Show. Was it difficult for him to make the transition from the psychedelic era, which you just talked about, the flower power days, and his group, Tyrannosaurus Rex, to the so-called um, heavy metal rock that he played in later years? Well, I don't think... It seemed to be, on a basic, quite a dramatic change. It was a dramatic change, and it upset a lot of his fans at the time. Uh, the fans from the Tyrannosaurus Rex days were quite disturbed by the fact that Mark appeared playing an electric guitar, because for years he sat down... In fact, nobody saw him for years, because he used to sit on the stage and play uh, acoustic, and uh, he was virtually hidden from view. But I don't think it was difficult for him, not personally. I think the difficulty he had really was convincing everybody else in the media and uh, the public at large that he had this uh, image, this charisma that he could offer uh, the public as a pop star rather than a, an underground hero. Now, he went downhill a little bit professionally, did he not? He was in the doldrums. And uh, we also hear that he was in the process of recovering from uh, drug addiction and alcoholism. Why do so many pop stars um, crack up in this way? Well, I think the pressures are, are fairly obvious if you're in the headlines uh, all the time and you're expected to be a star and then People are very uh, vicious in the rock business. They can stick the knife in quite uh, nastily. And Mark has his share of criticism. And he's probably been uh, criticised more than <coughs> many artists I can think of. So perhaps that would uh, affect him. But actually, I think a lot of that talk about his addiction and alcoholism, I think a lot of that is fairly exaggerated. I mean, he may well have drunk a lot of brandy. And he may have uh, taken a little bit through the nose at times. But uh, no way was Mark an addict. I don't believe that. Personally. Why was he criticised so heavily? Well, because the rock press uh, are very cynical, and Mark was a bit of a target, really, for uh, <clears throat> easy jives, because he'd, he'd had this huge success, and he enjoyed it. He obviously enjoyed his success, and uh, I think he made uh, a few enemies, uh, not so much enemies, but people tended to put him down a lot, because he so obviously enjoyed being a pop star. How would you rate him as, as a singer and a guitarist, as a musician? Well, I think um, Mark said himself once that uh, he wasn't a great guitar player, but he said to me once that he had bleeding hands, burning fingers and uh, really I think he projected himself as a, as one of his heroes was Jimi Hendrix and Mark loved Hendrix and I think he would love to play guitar like Jimi. What will you remember him best for? I think I'll remember Mark for his sense of humour and uh, a tremendous conversationist, very witty, a very nice guy and I shall miss him a lot. Chris Welch of Melody Maker. You're listening to the Midday Report, it's 1.15.
uh, get it on and telegram Sam. It's 28 minutes past one o'clock.